It's been a long day. I started off by filming a Get Ready With Me video early in the morning. It was filmed in bursts, interspersed with running off to tend to the kids before school. That's how hectic it was. I tried to get up before them to get started and it was still incredibly chaotic. I have no idea if the video I recorded is going to be usable. The point of this is that I didn't get a chance to film an intro, so this is my intro, I guess, from a coffee shop after I've had my chai latte. Chai lattes are my new thing. Will it even work? I don't know. If this makes it to YouTube, then uh, give it a thumbs up. Dedication. I tried. Anyway. Okay, so I am going to be starting off by placing an eyeshadow base all over my eyelids, starting on the lid, taking it all the way up to just under my eyebrows. This is going to help the eyeshadows to last longer because it's going to be a long day. And also it helps the eyeshadows to be a little bit more vibrant in their color and a bit more true to color as well. Because I have pigmented eyelids, you can see in the corner there in particular, this is a crucial step for me. Unless I'm doing a very minimal eye makeup look, which I rarely do. If I'm not gonna wear makeup, then I don't wear makeup. <laughs> I use an eyeshadow base. I'm then taking this light brown eyeshadow by Galactic and just buffing that into the crease area. This is going to help the darker color that I'm gonna apply later fade out as a sort of a gradual gradient effect at the crease area. So I apply a tiny bit first and then I take the same eyeshadow and build it up a little bit more. I like to apply eyeshadows gradually because I'm learning at the moment and so rather than to apply too much as I find my feet in the makeup application area, um, I like to apply it gradually just to make sure that I don't apply too much and then go through the hassle of having to remove it. Once I've done that, I take the darker brown color and buff that into the crease to begin with. Now, in this look, I'm actually only going to be using two eyeshadows, so it's quite an easy look. The key here is really to make sure that they're blended well together. So once I've applied it into the crease, and as you can see, I'm taking it out a little bit as well, just past the outer part of the eye, I'm going to take that same brown eyeshadow, the darker brown, and apply that all over the lid as well. You can see it's a little bit messy still in the inner part of the eye. It doesn't matter, we're going to clean that up later. And the outer part of the eye where the eyeshadow gets dragged up a little bit, you can see it's still not a clean line, but I'm going to clean that as well with a makeup removing wipe. Don't mind the munching sounds in the background. <laughs> That's Hobbsy eating. <laughs> This is a bit more of a casual type of video, by the way. You guys, I've left most of what I did in here. So I can have a bit of a chat with you as I go along. Okay, so I'm filling in my brows at the moment using my Rimmel Brow To Go kit. As much as I liked this before, I feel like I can find a better match for my eyebrow color. I would like something that's a darker brown. You never use black eyeshadow, even if you have got black hair, by the way but I feel that this can be a tad darker. Anywho, it'll do for now, and I was in a huge rush. This was early in the morning. Uh, you don't see what's going on outside of these clips. If you could zoom out and get the whole picture, you would see me stopping, tending to the kids. Right, babe? We have some teamwork going on in the morning. Mm -hmm. I run off, tend to them, calm them down. He does his thing. Then we swap. Anywho, so now I'm taking this liquid eyeliner and applying that to begin with as a thin line, really, just along the lash line. This is because, again, I want to build this up just to make sure that I don't go wrong. Because we were in such a huge rush this morning, I knew that I was bound to make mistakes. Thankfully, I didn't, alhamdulillah, but um, I had a feeling that I would go wrong if I became too ambitious. So I start off very thin and then I pull out a wing at the outer corner of the eye. It's not a hugely dramatic wing, it's just quite a thin black frame, I would say, which I feel looks nice against the brown and also enables the falsies that I'm going to add later to blend in more seamlessly with my real lashes. So I'm just using this thin brush to make sure that I'm getting right into the inner corner of the eye as well. And that will be the eyeliner. I'm sorry you can't see what I'm doing in some parts. 
This is definitely not the best type of get ready with me video that I've done, but please bear with me. I was borrowing a camera here. Some of you will also be able to tell that there's a glare. I haven't done anything to the video. I'm not trying to smooth out my skin or anything like that. It's literally the glare from the mirror. I guess from the closeness that I have with the camera and the mirror so that I could crop in and show you my eye makeup application properly. The downside to that was that there was a glare that was caused. Anywho, you can see I'm applying some foundation. This is the OCC Tint Foundation, which I really like upon first application. It's very yellow, which I said in my initial review of it, if any of you have watched my first impressions unboxing video that I did a couple of videos ago. It's quite flattering also for for camera. Unfortunately though, by the end of the day, it did oxidize on me. Something I mentioned happens quite a lot, so it literally ended up turning a little bit orangey, which is not the best, but for now it looked nice. So we're gonna go with this. <laughs> Please excuse the sideburn hair regrowth. <laughs> like I said, I did not have much time today, so the sideburn hair regrowth had to stay. We all get it ladies, it's just I didn't get a chance to remove it. <laughs> Sorry if that offends you, um, my videos are not going to be perfect all the time, in fact they're never quite fully perfect, but I try. Right, this is the CC Concealer product by Galactic. It is slightly peach, so it's great to cancel out darkness under the eyes. I'm applying that into the inner corner of the eye predominantly. I'm not applying it this heavily all the way under the eyes because I like a sort of a graduated look where it's brighter just under the eyes on the inner part and then it sort of fades out. And I really like the effect. You can see that it is, well, you'll be able to see on the other side. Again, apologies for the angle of the camera. If I bought it around a bit more then my head was blocking it and I was in a rush. So this is a true get ready with me where I am just going with the flow and moving as quickly as I can. Once I have my my camera actually replaced and my normal setup you will be able to see everything a lot clearer but I thought that I would put a video up in the meantime I really do loathe missing out any scheduled videos this is the banana powder by Anastasia Beverly Hills that I am patting under the eye I really like this and it works really well with this foundation because it's quite yellow and the foundation is also quite yellow so it blends in really nicely. I have raved about the Anastasia Beverly Hills contour palette in general and this banana powder, L-O-V-E. Okay, I'm taking this concealer by Urban Decay. This brush is handy because it enables me to get right into the inner corner of the eye and apply the product with some precision so as not to disturb the rest of the eyeshadow that I have over there. So I'm just blending it out. I don't want a harsh concealer line there, you see. So I'm using a tiny amount and just sort of feathering it out around the inner corner of the eye. Now I'm applying some falsies. So the first pair is, I believe, one by Eyelaw. I can't remember what number it was because I'm reusing these. And the second pair is by Japanesque. So I'm just pushing that in and making sure that they sit neatly on top of each other and by the lash line. With double lashes, it took me a little bit of time to actually get used to the lashes themselves. Oh, sorry, I go off camera as well. See, I told you it's not a perfect video at all. <laughs> I'm tight lining now with a black eye pencil and then using a brown eye pencil. This was a tiny one that I got as a sample from Makeup Forever on the lower waterline. I'm not doing black here because I want the focus to be on the brown tones of the eye makeup. So I'm just putting that along my lower waterline and then I'm taking the lighter brown eyeshadow which I had applied into the crease of my eye earlier and I am just buffing that under my lower lash line. Again, this doesn't have to be incredibly neat. And then I'm taking the darker brown and running that closer to the lash line with a smaller eyeshadow brush. Again, just brushing that back and forth along the lash line to make sure that it's well blended out into the lighter brown color. Now for the lower lash mascara. This is my beloved Too Faced Better Than False Lashes Extreme Mascara. I've done a review video dedicated to this mascara because it makes me look like I have lower lashes when I don't have much there. <laughs> so I'm applying the priming mascara first and then the fibers. You can see Hubsy there, he's just about to go off and drop the kids to school. And he's telling me that 
I've got to be ready by the time he comes back because we have to leave. We don't want to, we did actually end up catching a lot of traffic on the way up. But anywho, we wanted to leave as soon as the kids were dropped off at school. So at this point I'm thinking, okay, I need to hurry up. I don't have much time. <laughs> and that's the eye makeup done. I'm now taking some contour powder. This is one by Galactic. I was using this for the first time actually and I really, really like it. It was very pigmented, really easy to blend out. I'm applying that along my cheekbone and then blending upwards. Then I'm taking that same contour powder on a smaller brush and then I'm concentrating the product in the hollow of the cheek itself and that way you get more of a defined or a cut crease kind of bronzer look giving a look similar to what you would get when you do contour mapping i've also done a video on that uh, many videos ago actually whereby i used concealer and a contour powder to contour my face to give more depth this is a kind of a shortcut version of achieving a similar look without going through the extra steps and it saved me loads of time today okay now i'm taking this makeup geek blush it's a peachy color and applying that onto the apples of my cheeks and then spreading backwards now i've concentrated it more on the apples and not further back because i am going to be going for a nude lip and so i can put more color in the central parts of my face and it won't be overwhelming and then topping off with some highlighting powder this is the balm mary luminizer fantastic product I'm applying that in quite concentrated fashion actually on the tops of my cheekbones with a smaller brush and then i'm applying that same product on my brow bone for a bit of a highlight there and also in the inner corners of my eyes this just brightens up that area, opens up the eye a little bit more because we've used so many dark tones there. At this point, I'm thinking I need to hurry up. So I am taking this lip pencil by Colourpop. I probably should have sharpened it. Applying that as a normal lip liner along my lips. I'm also filling it in. It's not imperative that you fill in your lips before applying the next lip product that you will be seeing, but I've done it anyway. <laughs> I do find that it does help to use a lip liner when using the Anastasia lip products. I absolutely love these lip colors. They do not budge. I did apply a lip balm in the morning, but I mean, apart from that, there's nothing extra that I do. So this is a nude tone that I've applied today. And that's it, that's the makeup done. Now onto the hijab. So I've popped the hood on my head and then I'm using two slides or barbie pins as my american friends would say on the sides of my face to hold the hijab down there just behind the ear i'm then going to flip the hijab from the back to the front now you don't have to do this this is not the only way that you can wear the hijab in fact i know that you guys wear them in so many different ways this is just how i wear it sort of my signature style that I wear most of the time and one that I find very easy to wear as well. So I brought one side around and then I'm going to create two folds and then pin them down. I then have to go and remove that neck scarf that I'm wearing, that black neck scarf. So I'm going to go and remove that and then carry on. Now I'm going to be cropping in a little bit and then explaining to you what I'm doing here. I'm basically just gathering the front folds of the hijab and pinning them down onto my top from the inside using a no snag hijab pin. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to tell you what I'm doing. We were going to London to support Diane Pilangi, who is a designer, during a London Fashion Week international fashion designer event. So it was like an exhibition and then she had a demo. Anyway, so back to the hijab. I am taking the other side around, as you can see. I have to say my hijab styles never ever look exactly the same on you as much as they don't look the same on me. Sometimes I add more folds, sometimes I add less folds. The style will also look different depending on the type of hijab that I'm using. So that's about it. That is my get ready with me. I hope that you got a good idea of, of the different steps that were involved. I shall hopefully be back with my normal videos very soon. You want to see more get ready with me videos as I attend more events or weddings and all the rest of that as summer approaches, then give the video a thumbs up and I shall be sure to make sure that I record that for you. Okay, thank you so much for watching today. I really do appreciate your support. Make sure that you subscribe to my channel. The subscribe button is just under this video. If you would like to watch more videos from me, then feel free to click on any of the windows that you see on your screen right now. Once again, thank you so much for watching and I shall be catching you very soon in my next video.
Take care, lovelies. Toodles.